Question, what's one of the more challenging things you encountered while painting? For me, it was actually painting grass. I've had lots of failures in the past, but I never gave up. And like with every skill in life, the more you do it and practice, the better you get. Hello and welcome. My name is Charles Lambos. I go by Bob, and I'm not your typical painter. And today, I'm gonna do a demonstration on how to paint grass. Very detailed, up-close grass. And why? Well, sometimes you need to in order to establish a nice sense of death. Also, if you like these kinds of videos, please let me know in the comments. This video took me a very long time to create. Plus, this grass actually took me quite a while to paint as well. If you have a suggestion for a future video, such as painting trees or hills, let me know, I'll greatly appreciate it. In the current painting that I'm working on, you have grass obviously all the way in the distance, some up close right here behind the sheep, and then there's some right in front of the viewer. And in many ways, how you paint those sections makes a big impact on the illusion of depth and distance. In the previous video, I was actually working on a completely different painting. It was much smaller, and in a way, a warm up to my current painting. The video focused mostly on how to paint grass in the distance. And I did promise I was gonna do a video on how I did the grass up close in that same painting, but I started working on this sheet painting and I figured that this would actually make a way better demonstration because there is a lot more grass. Anyhow, before we get started on the demonstration, let me go over some tips on how to paint grass. First off, it's always good to have an assortment of brushes. You don't have to go crazy with hundreds of different brushes, just a nice assortment of them. I would recommend some flats to block out colors and big bodies of paint, liner brushes for the grass blades themselves, and then a few tiny round brushes for very fine details. You'll see me using them throughout the video. Next is color. Being prepared is very important. And what do I mean by that? Well, it's being prepared with a batch of colors that you're gonna use very frequently and having them ready so you don't have to mix as often. Check out my video on how to mix greens for a more in-depth color demonstration. The best advice I could give you is try to make a nice batch of colors and then as you're painting, make variations as you go from lights to darks to different tones. After you make a batch of paint, you obviously need to apply it onto the canvas. And what better way than to use some medium? This is a batch I made, and I have also a video as well on how to make your own medium. I like to call this stuff classic medium. It's really a mixture of two parts turpentine, one part stand oil, and another part Damar varnish. For a more in-depth demo, check out my video on how to make your own medium. Store-bought is also okay, like liquid and so on. This will help with the flow of the paint as you're painting the grass blades. And towards the end, thin layers will help push back some of the grass. More on that later. And lastly, let's talk about the grass itself. It's not just straight lines, there's lots of variations colors and other plants besides the grass itself. Now everyone's painting is gonna be different. Some people are gonna have perfect grass that's well cared for and others will have grass that actually has live animals that feed on it. And in some ways there'll be patches of dirt in some areas and some other wild weeds and plants that are not commonly found in a typical lawn. Also, lighting. This is taking place during a sunset with a nice beautiful orange glow. Your grass that you're painting might be in bright sunlight or a different type of sunrise or sunset or even at night. And the colors will be different also based on the weather. Whether it's a dry arid area or the grass could be very lush and green from lots of heavy rain such as the grass that I painted in this painting. As for the reference photo, I will periodically show it as I do the demonstration throughout the video. That way, you get an idea how I analyze it and then paint it. Anyways, enough talking. 
Let's go to the demonstration. The first stages of any painting, you should always have either a very good drawing or a very good underpainting that has everything properly placed in the correct area. For me, it was making sure sheep were in the right spot. I started off with a simple grid just to make sure I planted the sheep in my painting in the right area. In some ways, I painted the negative space and in others, I painted the bodies of the sheep. It was a combination of both. The idea was to lay out bodies of color that I would later build over with more detail. Besides the sheep, I also painted certain objects such as that tree in the back and a fence as well. Think of them as place markers so I don't get lost while creating the grass. And besides patches of dark and light greens, I also painted patches of dirt as well. In this stage of the painting, remember, you're just building bodies of color and later you'll build over them again. I'm probably going to be repeating myself a lot because with all honesty, painting grass is very repetitive. So please bear with me during this demonstration and tutorial as I try to explain how I'm painting the grass. I start off by painting a lettuce type plant that's all the way in the bottom left corner. Again, think of this kind of like a place marker and I will build later grass around it. Besides that lettuce, I saw other little plants in the grass. I didn't go into too much detail, but I plotted some individual leaves that I saw and later I will build on them more. And because of the sheep and uneven terrain, there's shadows and dark spots in the grass. I didn't get all the lights and darks during the underpainting, but as I progress, I will add them as I go. Here I began working on some individual blades. I always start from the back and usually work my way to the front. These grass blades are going to be on the darker side because they are behind the sheep. Also, they're not going to be as sharp. I would here and there go back and blur them a little bit. I used in a way a combination of a liner brush and then a flat brush. It might seem like a little tedious task to do, but it's necessary to create the illusion of many different blades of grass, even if they're going to be on the blurry side. As you're building up the layers of grass, it's helpful to go from dark to light and apply the very bright grass blades towards the end. As you move closer and closer to the front, the grass blades are going to get a little bit bigger. So use bolder strokes with a liner brush. A helpful tip when painting the grass blades, try to use the same color in other areas where you see it. So you don't have to go back and forth with different colors. This saves you time, and it makes the process a lot more smoother. Here I'm painting between the sheep's legs. Again, as you can see, the grass is on the darker side, but there's some spots where there's some highlights, probably because of the sun. But the lights and darks are very important to help establish shadows for the objects that are in your painting, plus to define the terrain in your painting. I am periodically going back with a bigger brush and kind of blurring them gently. This is still kind of in a way more in the background even though it's in the foreground and by blurring it, it helps push the grass behind more into the distance. Let's fast forward a little bit to another section of the demonstration. So I continue to build the grass blade for blade. For the most part, it's a lot of repetition again. I paid attention to the photo not to copy the grass exactly as it is, but in a way to mimic the pattern. While painting, keep in mind there's some advantages when you're working wet on wet, such as some of the grass blades will be a lot more softer. And during this time, it's also easier to blur them with a dry brush. This is important in the beginning stages because you're building up an illusion of a lot of blades of grass. Yes, again, this is tedious. Be mindful of dirt patches and other obstacles. For me, I have the sheep's feet and also that lettuce that's on the bottom left. In order to get the darks to stand out, I used a mixture of alizarin crimson and viridian. I applied it mostly in the darker areas and also the dirt. 
and then I would run my brush right through it while the paint is still wet because when the paint is dry, it will be more sharper which would be better suited for grass on the top or front. Not in the beginning stages when you're trying to have more blurry grass. Remember, you're building grass from the back to the front and it makes sense for the ones in the back to be more blurry. Besides painting actual grass blades, keep in mind you might have to paint between grass as well. Let's fast forward again to another location. It might be a good idea to go against your reference photo or observation with lights and darks if you want certain things to pop out. For example, the lettuce that's on the bottom left, I'm applying more darks around the edge of the leaves. The contrast will make the lettuce pop out in the end. But before I finish the lettuce, I have to create more grass. During this process, you might find it that your painting will start to get a little on the muddy side. In my personal opinion, that is okay. Why? Well, you can always correct it later. It's part of the process to experiment as you're doing this and see what works, whether it's certain colors on top of others or a experimentation in different brush strokes to give the illusion of different grass blades. In the end, the end result is what matters. Here, I have to paint the sheep a bit, especially the legs and the head, before I continue on making more grass blades. It's very important to consider the order of layering when doing any type of painting. What's in front should be painted last. In this scenario, the grass overlaps the sheep, therefore I paint the sheep first and then grass over it. Let's fast forward a little bit. Here I'm building up the grass that's behind the lettuce. I don't want it to stand out too much since the lettuce is more closer to the viewing plane in the foreground so I typically want more of a blurry effect that way the grass behind recedes and the leaves of the lettuce pop but that doesn't mean certain individual grass blades shouldn't be sharp only the ones that are more deeper into the back. Let's speed through this section a little bit. Here I'm continuing to build more grass, but I'm also applying bodies of color to block out areas of the canvas. It's not a bad idea to apply it in a way where it's directional. After I apply big bodies of color, I go back with a liner brush and paint the grass blade after blade. Yes, it might look insane, but sometimes you must take these kinds of steps to create an awesome illusion also, while building the grass, try using the same color as much as possible in other areas where you see it. It will spare you some time from cleaning and getting more different colors of paint. Don't overdo it, just try to spot areas where you see the same color. And again, don't forget to blur, especially between the grass blades. Because this is only just the beginning stage, there will be more grass that will be built on top. Also, depending on your terrain, and the objects in your painting, pay close attention where the darks are. Here the sheep cast lots of shadows and I applied a lot of really dark tones, especially where the legs and underneath their heads are. Plus there's also the dirt. Another helpful tip, if you created some grass that you do not like, it's not a bad idea just to blur it out. Remember, you could build on top of it again. I wanna remind people, Painting is, in a way, a constant form of correction. As you build the grass, don't feel bad if you made mistakes. You could always paint over it or blur it out and paint right on top. When painting the grass blades, pay attention to the ones that are in the light and the ones that are in the dark. Usually the ones hidden in shadows have less contrast and are on the cooler tone. And the ones that the sun is hidden are definitely warmer and brighter. A helpful tip when you are going brighter, make sure your paintbrush is very clean. You do not want your brights to get muddied by darker tones. Same thing with the darks. If your brush is not clean, you could be diluting the overall darkness and your results might not be as you desire in the end. 
Since this video is really about painting grass, I'm gonna really fast forward this whole lettuce section. But I did spend a lot of time on it because it is definitely in the front and it needs to be super detailed since it's very close in the foreground to the viewer. But one thing to point out is as I was painting it, I laid certain blades of grass as place markers, but towards the end, I would definitely do the final touches and the grass that will overlap. Also the ones that are in the shadow casted by the lettuce, I made sure they were on the softer, cooler tone, so they receded. I also brightened the edges so they stand out from the grass that's behind them. If you want a more thorough video of mine, I do have a video on how to paint leaves. Check it out. Now that in a way I finished the lettuce, I am painting some of the other plants and grass blades that are in front of it. I'm also softening the edges and also applying some darks in the areas where it meets the ground. That way it looks like it's planted in the earth and not just hovering over the grass. This process involves rebuilding some of the dirt areas and also in some ways going against the photo to enhance the illusion on the canvas. Now that I got a good foundation for the grass, I'm applying some more variations of plant life. I'm not 100% what they are, but there's these clusters of bright little flowers or leaves. I'm also going to start applying brighter blades of grass and be mindful of leaves as well. And slowly but surely, the grass is coming together. Also, it's not a bad idea to again paint between the grass blades. I'm applying some darks in some of those areas just to enhance the contrast. Again, since this grass is up close in the foreground, I do want it to stand out as much as possible. Contrast will help as well as sharpening some of the grass blades that stand out. Remember when you're concentrating in a certain area, don't forget about the rest of the painting. So periodically I would go back and forth in certain areas just to balance out things. I will use some of the same colors I'm using in the foreground towards the middle ground. You do want the painting to be very cohesive. Here I'm trying to build the grass that's behind the sheep in the far left. I'm not going to be very detailed on it, but I do want to create the sense that there's blades of grass, but on a softer blurry tone, since I want them to recede more into the distance. I'm also painting the sheep themselves to in a way correct them, but also preparing for the next stage for when I do paint the sheep, the hair will overlap the grass. Layering is very important. In some scenarios, grass will be over the sheep. In this section, the sheep over the grass. When painting the grass more in the distance, be detailed, but not in the way as you would up close. Some of the details you want to be paying attention to are dirt patches, flowers, and some of the grass that stands out, but not to the extent as the foreground though. Your lines are not going to be as sharp, you're going to be blurring more, and the overall contrast won't be as much. Remember, you're trying to push that grass more in the back and have the grass that's in the foreground stand out a lot more. Believe it or not, at one point, I had to stop working on the grass and work on the sheep. That's why they look a lot more developed than earlier. And the reason why is because I have to paint the grass on top of the sheep. Again, layering is very important. And in this scenario, the sheep are behind the grass, even though there's some grass behind the sheep. But since the paint is nice and dry, I could carefully paint individual grass blades. As I do it, I do use a very dry brush to kind of soften the edges a little bit. That way the edges are a little more smoother looking. One thing you'll notice for the rest of the video is I will be doing a lot of touch-ups and it's very necessary. Some of the things I'm doing are painting in between grass blades particularly the ones that I want to boost the contrast with. And in other scenarios, I am applying brighter colors over the darker colors. The paint is mostly dry, so I'm able to get nice sharp grass blades. There's some blades that I actually do like, and instead of painting over them, I'm enhancing them. I'm not copying the photo 100%, but instead I'm just trying to mimic the pattern I see. 
During this stage of the painting, you will notice most of the color I will be applying is definitely on the brighter side. Sometimes it's going to be a entire grass blade and other times it's going to be just touching up one because if a grass blade is bent, it's not going to be entirely bright. Only the part that has light hitting it directly. Also something less noticeable is the way I'm trying to push some of the grass back. And I'm trying to make that happen by painting between grass blades and using a little bit more medium than paint. Pretty much a very thin layer of paint. In some ways it blurs the grass blades to push them back a little more from the ones that are standing out. Earlier in the video, I showed how I painted some leaves, but I did not define them. I just planted them with some paint so later I could go back into them. Here I'm trying to build some of the grass behind them and also to make them pop out a little more. I'm applying some darks underneath them. I'm not too familiar what kind of plant it is. It could be another smaller lettuce. But the idea is to create that illusion of leaves by highlighting the edges and making them stand out from the grass. Remember, sometimes grass is going to have a variation of plant life and the more you capture, the more believable it will be. I felt the dark dirt patches were not dark enough in certain areas, so I started reworking some of them too. Again, I used some thin layers of darks to cover up some of the grass blades and then painted directly on those darks too. I was trying to create an illusion of the grass sticking out from the ground. And to be honest, this is a illusion that I still need to work myself to pull off. But like with anything in life, the more you practice, the better you get. During this stage of the painting, I'm taking advantage of the paint being dry. I'm continuously building more and more grass blades over the ones I painted prior. I'm further applying more layers of dark tones to push back some of the grass. Again, these coats are very thin with more medium than paint. And in others, I'm applying some brighter ones that are going to stand out. Besides the bright ones, I'm also touching up some of the dark weeds. It's hard to explain, but there's these little plants that stand out and I think they're weeds. Let's fast forward a little bit more again. One of the things that I'm trying to do to help create a sense of depth is to in a way soften the area behind the sheep. Besides applying darks in that area, sharpening the grass in front of it also helps. Think of it as a constant tug of war of getting the balance of sharp and bright grass blades correct. Again, I'm trying to paint between the blades so the ones that are in front stand out I'm also trying to, in some ways, hide the sheep's feet because in a way the grass is covering them and this was possible because I painted the sheep earlier. Again, the order of your layers is very important. Let's fast forward a little bit more again. Line after line, I continue to build grass and like mentioned earlier, it's more of the highlights at this stage. I also tried to capture some more darks and plant life that I see. And in some areas, I was totally not satisfied like here. I totally blotted out some darks in some of the areas that I think I painted too much grass and not enough dirt. Again, it's okay. Painting is a constant form of correction. And here I corrected myself. Besides the darks, there's more of this type of plant that kind of had little clusters of leaves. I made sure to paint them. If you thought the beginning stages were tedious, wait till you get towards the very end. In ways, I analyzed what I painted and looked at the photo many times and stood back and observed. It's also a good idea to notice areas that you're satisfied with and try to figure out what you did right. To wrap up this video and speed through to the end, I'll just try to summarize how I painted the grass in detail. Always in the beginning stages, try to do a nice drawing or underpainting where you're plotting things in the right spot right before you actually start painting the grass itself. Painting big bodies of colors for the underpainting is a very good idea. It'll help cover blank spots in the canvas 
And when those bodies of paint are still wet, take advantage of the moment to have some of those softer grass blades. And then towards the end, take advantage of when the paint is dry to have the sharper ones that will stand out. And as you paint the grass, try to mimic the pattern you see in the photo or the grass that you're observing in life. With that said, try using the same color also as much as possible in other areas where you see it. Therefore, to save yourself time from cleaning your brushes too often. Speaking of cleaning brushes, if you wanna go very light or very dark, make sure you clean them very thoroughly or you will dilute the darks and the brights. Also, don't be afraid to blur some of the ones you already created especially at the beginning stages when you're trying to push back grass. Towards the end, it will make more sense. And lastly, going from darks to lights and also working from top to bottom and left to right is pretty ideal. Unless you're left-handed, then go from right to left. And don't be afraid to make mistakes. You can always correct them. When I finish the painting and I look at it, I want to get that same feeling I had when I was there taking the photo. The sheep staring at me and that nice golden glow of light. And being very detailed with the grass will help recreate that memory as if I was there. So for me, this tedious tug of war of getting the right balance of grass and color and contrast, it's worth it to me. Is it worth it to you? If you made it to the end, Thanks for watching, I truly appreciate it. This video did take a while to make and also paint. If you like content like this, again, let me know in the comments. Once again, my name is Charalambos, I go by Bob. I'm not your typical painter. Stay tuned for more, bye.